Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a very highly requested video. So at the height of the pandemic, uh, we were all forced indoors and so we were kind of forced to pick up new hobbies. And in our case, we started streaming. So since we started streaming, um, I've been asked a lot about like my streaming setup, recommendations, and stuff like that. So today, since I did get a brand new computer behind me, I have not installed OBS on this computer. So this time what we're gonna go through is a complete install, settings, and setting up our first scene using the Nintendo Switch as my game. I'm using a uh, Mirrorbox capture card and all that, and we're just gonna run through that right now. So first, let's talk about hardware that I use. So I use Windows. So a lot of my friends that I have had uh, streaming because they were in academia, blah, academia, because we are in university, a lot of people have MacBooks. And since we've been forced indoors, a lot of people have seen how like locked down the Apple ecosystem is and have branched out and actually made their own PC setup. So I am using PC and I am a PC or Windows user. So today's tutorial will be completely based on PC. So if you're a Mac user, sorry, I don't, I don't have a Mac, okay? So first, let's talk hardware. Uh, right now, I am using a desktop PC, but I used to stream on my laptop, okay? So all you really need are is a laptop with a bunch of USB ports. Um, another thing that I do recommend is being hardwired into the internet. So uh, Wi-Fi is good, but a hardwired connection is better. So this is just a really cheap... USB dongle that I got at Best Buy and that helps me hardwire my laptop and now my desktop onto the internet. Another thing that I use is a microphone, dedicated microphone. So this is the Blue Yeti. I did pick this up from Best Buy at the height of pandemic. But another thing that does work as well is if you have a headset with the dedicated microphone. So this does work as well. So another hardware piece that I do use is an HDMI capture card. So here I have the Elgato HD60S Plus, but what I'm actually gonna be setting up today is a mirror box. Since today, running through this tutorial, we're gonna be setting up the Nintendo Switch, and the Nintendo Switch uh, outputs at 1080. The HD60S Plus captures in 4K or like passes through in 4K. So that's actually not necessary for this setup. So I'll be using the mirror box and I'll put a link in the description below with all the hardware that I'm using. Also, since I am using a desktop PC, I will be setting up an external webcam. So here I have the Logitech C920 that I picked up from Target for less than a hundred bucks but this will be the webcam that I'm using for this setup. So after all that is plugged in, and this is why I say that you need a PC with a lot of USB ports because the webcam plugs in by USB, the microphone plugs in by USB, the HD capture card is another USB port, and uh, I, you know, mouse, keyboard, all that just, you know, you, so you need, oh yeah, the ethernet adapter, this is another USB. So you definitely need some USB ports. But now let's go ahead and since all that is hooked up, let's go ahead and jump onto the desktop and see what we need to download. So I use OBS Studio. Um, so a good contender was Slobs or Streamlabs OBS, but Logitech has purchased them and kind of turned it into bloatware. So OBS Studio is the base code 
of OBS and then Slobs or Logitech came in and added to it and made it a lot chunkier. So I'm going with just a clean install of OBS Studio. So you can head over to uh, obsproject.com you can download, I have it here for Windows, and when you download, it'll start the download automatically. All right, so once we're back here on the desktop, we're gonna run the OBS Studio installer. So right now, it's not gonna let me run it again because I already have OBS set up and I'm actually using a version of OBS to record my screen. So after that, I do actually like having some plugins so that I can actually alter my screen. So I'm gonna go over to Stream FX and I'll put the link and I'll go ahead and download this as well. And since I already have it downloaded here, I would go ahead and just run the Windows installer. That's one way of installing plugins into your OBS is using a Windows installer. Or you can do here like motion effects, which is another plugin, and it has a data and an OBS plugins folder. All you would do is simply take those and in your OBS folder where it's installed on your computer, you would just take those two folders, drag them, and add them to that project. And then there that's how those get installed. So those are just a couple plugins that I do like to use right away. So I went ahead and just downloaded them and installed them. Okay, so now we're going to run OBS for the first time on this computer. Okay, so let's see here. So yeah, when you run OBS for the first time on a brand new computer, you're going to get the auto configuration wizard. You can actually cancel out of this and run it whenever you want. I, let's go ahead and go through and then let's go ahead and configure our OBS for streaming. So here, optimize for streaming, recording is secondary, yes. So we're gonna use our um, we're gonna use this base canvas. I like staying in the 1920 by 1080 aspect ratio, even though I do have a 4K monitor, and this just lets me scale everything appropriately. So I'll go ahead and stick with that 1920 by 1080, and you can actually choose 30 FPS or 60 FPS if you want that nice like really smooth kind of video, I would recommend going down to 720 by uh, 1280 by 720 and then bumping this up to 60 because you gotta think a smaller image rendered at, at 60 seconds or at every, you know, 60 frames per second versus a bigger image rendered at 30. So uh, for my preference I like the bigger image and since I don't do many FPS games I go ahead and go with 30 but you can go with 720 and 60 frames per second so I use twitch as my streaming service now you can connect your account which makes uh, getting your stream key and everything very automated or else you would have to go to your twitch account copy and paste your stream key into OBS but let's go ahead and just connect it. So I am the Dusty Penguin. And please follow me on Twitch. And I'm going to blank this out for security purposes because this is my password. <laughs> and I'm going to log in. And so what this does is it automatically syncs my stream key. And so then I don't have to actually go through the process of copying and pasting my stream key from my Twitch account. It'll automatically do it here. And so here I'm gonna say, I'm gonna prefer hardware encoding because I do have an NVIDIA 1070 graphics card in my machine. And then instead of doing the bandwidth bitrate test, I'm gonna go ahead and set this at 6,000, which is the max. But if you are doubtful about your internet connection, go ahead and run a speed test on Google. We're not too concerned about the download rate. We are more concerned with the upload rate. So I typed in 6,000 kilobits per second, which is around six megabytes per second, which is what we have here. 
and my upload is 23. So I am well in that bandwidth range where I can support up to six kilobits per second or six uh, megabytes per second. So I'll put 6,000 here and hit next. And so these are the settings that I'm gonna go with. So I'm gonna go with uh, Twitch is my server, 6,000 is my video up upload. Uh, if I am gonna record, okay. So let's apply those settings. Let's hit okay. Okay, and so this is stream FX and we're gonna go ahead and just close this. So first of all, I wanna go through the settings to make sure I get all this correct. So one of the settings that I wanna make sure is not checked, which I've seen before, is automatically record when streaming. I wanna make sure that is not checked because let's say your computer doesn't handle recording and streaming well, you're gonna get a really big hardware lag on the computer. And we actually seen this happen with some of our friends when they started streaming, for some reason this box was checked. So we don't want that. For stream, I'm using Twitch. See here, it's already uploaded my stream key, so that's good to go. For my output, I'm gonna put here 6,000. I'm gonna make sure this is hardware NVENC encoding because I do want the NVIDIA graphics card to do the encoding. Here, 160 or 128, I'll leave it at 128. That's like CD quality. For here, this can stay the same. For my audio, this is where I like to really like make my settings really specific. So here for desktop audio, I'm gonna put disable. And for mic and auxiliary, I'm gonna put disable. And, then, and I'll show you in a minute why. And so this will stay the same, 1920 at 30 frames per second. Okay, so we have our blank canvas now. So this will be our blank canvas. So one thing that um, I'll show you now is here in our audio mixer, the audio mixer is completely blank. And if you didn't see a little bit ago, if I actually left this by default and this by default, here you actually see the audio bar with two devices already. Now. This does is that no matter how many scenes I make, these devices by default will always be on those scenes. And the way I set up my scenes, I don't want that. So by default, I'm gonna go into the settings and I'm gonna disable these. and then save. And so now every new scene that I make doesn't have an audio device automatically generated into it. And we'll see why that's helpful in just a second. So let's go ahead and set up our start screen. So I'm gonna start off with a blank canvas. I'm gonna add my first device, which is gonna be my webcam. So I'll go into the sources. I'm gonna add a video capture device. I'm gonna call this webcam. I'm using the Logitech C920 and I'm gonna go ahead and change this resolution to 1080 because that's what this camera is. And boom, there we are, look at that. Wow, okay, but let's go ahead and grab one of these corners and then bring it down. All right, so now I'm not all over the place. Boom, we got our webcam, all right. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna add my game capture. So I'm gonna do another video capture device since I am using the mirror box today. I'm gonna use mirror box, I'm gonna call that and then I'm gonna here, I'm gonna go ahead and capture mirror box video capture and boom, there it is. So I have the mirror box actually plugged into the Nintendo Switch on the standard Switch dock and a HDMI cable. So here we can see that boom, the Nintendo Switch is there. But one thing that we're not seeing here is the audio moving. 
So I'm going to go ahead and add an audio input capture. And I'm going to call this one microphone. Okay. And for the microphone, I'm going to specify, I'm going to be using my complete audio 2, which is my audio interface. I'm going to go ahead and add that. And now every time I'm speaking, you can see the sound bar jumping on the microphone. Boom, boom, boom. All right. But one thing that you noticed is as I'm adding sources here, right, they're being piled on top of each other. So what we'll see is that order matters. So we can actually push our microphone down to the bottom because that has no visuals on it. And with the mirror box being on top, it completely takes over the canvas. But we want to we want to be able to see our webcam, right? So let's go ahead and put that above the mirror box and then boom, there it is. Boom. There it is. Oh. There we have the webcam and our game capture. But as I'm clicking through, I don't hear the Nintendo Switch yet. So let's go ahead. Let's load up a game just so we can have something playing while it's going. And you can't, you can't hear it, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna la we're gonna add our last device, and I'm gonna call this Mira Box Audio. And then here I'm gonna do Mira Box Video Capture Device as my audio capture. And so I'm gonna go ahead and take this Mira Box and hide it and this webcam and hide it since they don't have any audio. And here I have mirror box audio and my microphone. And as soon as it loads, oh, that's right. So let's go ahead and take this and we'll deactivate it real quick and then we'll activate it again. Now, you'll notice one thing. Although the audio is playing on the OBS, we can see it jumping here I cannot hear it on my headphones as a monitor device. So in order to change that, we actually right click on the audio mixer, go to advanced audio properties, and then here where it says audio monitoring, we switch the mirror box audio from monitor off to output and monitor, monitor and output. So at this point, we have a full stream ready to go. So actually at this point, I can just hit start streaming and we would be live on Twitch. We have a gameplay going, we have the webcam going, we have the microphone set up, but we are still missing one thing, right? What happens when somebody follows? What happens when somebody subscribes? So we're gonna add one more thing and that's our alerts. I use stream elements for my alert. So I'm going to go over to streamelements.com. In stream elements, when it's your first time, you would log in with your Twitch account. And what I've done is I've made just a scene with alerts only. So I can add this overlay to any of my scenes and the alerts would pop up on each one of those scenes. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a browser source. So we go to the add, we'll add a browser source. We'll call this stream elements alerts. And so here in the URL, we'll go ahead and paste the URL that we got from stream elements. And so for the width, it's the 1920, the height is 1080, and we'll go ahead and remove the CSS code, and we want to control the audio via OBS, and I'll show you why. So now we have our alerts. I want it to show up on top of everything else, so I have it here on top, and we now in our audio mixer, we have a new bar. So I wanna go ahead and right click that 
and for our alerts so that way while I'm streaming I can hear them I want to put monitor and output so this way when I'm playing online and we get a new sub you will be able to hear it in your headset so we'll go to stream elements and we will emulate a follower event and There it is. So with this, you have set up a new scene. You have set up your audio. You've set up your video capture with the webcam. You've set up your game capture with the mirror boxes, what I'm using, but you can use any type of game capture device. And we've even set up our alerts. So at the beginning, I said, this is you know important that I set up my audio devices because now I can jump over to scene two and scene two has nothing on it. So let's say I wanted to make this my intro scene. Well, I don't have to worry about my microphone being on on the intro scene while I'm waiting, you know, for the for the stream to load. So this way I have more control over my audio properties from scene to scene. So again, we went over through our basic setup and we are ready to stream. If you have any questions or would like to see another video like this, please leave your questions in the comments below and I will address them as they come on. I'm gonna go ahead and continue to set up my OBS so that way I can play some Animal Crossing or some Monster Hunter Rise right now. And I will catch you all on the next video. So remember to like and subscribe and uh, thank you for stopping by. All right, out.